It appears that Brandon Ayuk could be headed to Pittsburgh. What will his fantasy and dynasty value look like there? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting the way we'd like them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Just visit FanDuel.com. To get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Yahoo Fantasy. And it's a Wednesday show. So, of course, Matt Williamson is here. You can follow him on Twitter at Williamson NFL. And we've got some mailbag questions that we're going to answer today, including what should we think of JJ McCarthy's injury? How do we evaluate rookies in the preseason? But Matt, let's first start with this. Brandon Ayuk. I mean, this has been going on for forever, it seems like now. We are recording this Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. So if breaking news happens, it happens. But if Brandon Ayuk is traded to the Steelers, how much does that impact his fantasy and dynasty value? And in the same way, how does that impact George Pickens? So first of all, apparently you didn't get the memo. I mean, Kate's got her Pittsburgh sweatshirt on. I got my official team gear polo. I mean, we're ready to rock. I'm in my dorm room for the last night of 2024 training camp. And to be pulled back the curtain, as soon as we hang up here, I am walking over to the cafeteria to eat dinner with the players. And I'm hoping there's a huge banner that says, welcome to Pittsburgh, Brandon. And everybody's dancing and singing and, and everything's wonderful. Or... Even tomorrow is the last practice here in Latrobe. Maybe number 11's out there running around. Because, frankly, I'm tired of talking about it. The Steeler black and gold blood in me wants it to happen very badly. But i am been teased to no end. As for your question, I've been trading him in the leagues I own him. And I own him in a lot because I bought him. I've loved him forever. And I and I thought it was kind of a buy, sell high opportunity. Because I just don't know any of the scenarios, Pittsburgh or San Francisco, where he can be a Amon Ross St. Brown volume guy. I mean, I think he helps the Steelers. He absolutely helps the Niners. I still don't understand why he can't get a deal done in San Francisco and go in the Super Bowl and, and all the stuff for NFL reasons. But frankly, I think he's a little bit better of an NFL asset than a dynasty asset or, you know, a fantasy asset overall. Okay. I think that's all very fair. And yes, I also very much want this to happen for the Steelers and not just because of Brandon Ayuk. And I'm actually kind of surprised. So in preparation for this potential trade, I went through and I redid my projections for the entire roster as though the Brandon Ayuk trade happened. Now, the biggest impact for this potential trade for me was the fallout for Pat Fryermuth, who they've been rumored to to potentially be in the mix for, you know, signing an extension with Fryermuth here shortly. He's one of my favorite receiving tight ends, but like I do there's no I doubt that Brandon Ayuk yeah. he would just kill any and all fantasy value because they they're not gonna sign, you know, they're not trading for him without the intention of signing him to a long-term deal. But for as many question marks as there are for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I actually didn't have a tremendous change in terms of his overall fantasy projection. Um, Russell Wilson was actually a, a pretty efficient passer overall last year, obviously not as efficient as a Brock Purdy, but um, you know, through a, a five plus percent touchdown percentage um, connected with Cortland Sutton on a lot of those, I think he kind of profiles as this brand or as more of the George Pickens type of the offense, but like all things considered, when you're looking at the overall efficiency of Arthur Smith's offense with Ryan Tannehill, which I think this is, we're probably getting something closer to the Titans offense, I think, with the personnel that they have than what they had with the Falcons. And that was a pretty darn efficient passing offense. So like 
Yeah. I don't think on a yearly basis we're looking at a huge adjustment for Brandon Ayuk. And right now he's being drafted as wide receiver 15 in dynasty startups. It feels pretty fair to me. So one thing I throw out on Sweeter Nation Radio all the time is it's remarkable. The last two seasons as a team, the Steelers have thrown 12 and 13 touchdown passes. In 34 games, they've turned they've thrown 25 touchdown passes. Wilson threw 26 last year and didn't play the last two games. I think George Pickens, it's either nine or 11. I think it's nine end zone targets in his entire career. Like all that stuff's going to change. Like, I don't care who it is. It's just an upgrade in offensive coordinator. They may actually throw touchdown passes. That hasn't happened in a long time around here. It's crazy. There's a couple of different reasons why I, I don't want this trade to happen. Number one, I just don't like seeing my Yinzer friends ha- happy. So that's probably <laughs> priority number one. I don't know how the Lockdown Podcast Network convinced me to do a show with two Yinzers, but here I am. Uh, but no, the, the real reason is I worry about the efficiency. Russell Wilson was efficient last year, yes. But I do wonder what Brandon Ayuk is going to look like away from a Kyle Shanahan offense. Again, this isn't to take sure. anything away from Brandon Ayuk. I just think everybody in that offense – their numbers are inflated a little bit in terms of efficiency. The question is how much is it? Is, is he go from averaging 17 yards a catch down to 14 yards? Does he get more targets in Pittsburgh and it ends up not really mattering? There's just a lot of variables here, but I think if he stays in San Fran, I think that's where he maintains his best or his highest dynasty value. And then Matt for Pickens, I, I kind of feel like if George Pickens – has to deal with Brandon Ayuk. I, th- I just think Brandon Ayuk's the better player. And I think Brandon Ayuk is going to garner more targets. I don't want to say that George Pickens becomes unusable for fantasy because that's not true. But I think projecting him as like a top 24 receiver is probably not smart either. What do you think? I tend to agree, but I get jaded because I watch him every day in practice and go, oh my gosh, is he talented? I know. And, and he looks but here's way the thing. better. He, yeah. he posted an 11 11- hundred yard receiving season in a year where yes, like the, the offense was as bad as it could possibly get. Now, if you would have thrown in like three more touchdowns into the mix, he would have already been a top 24 wide receiver. And that was, you know, obviously Deontay Johnson had some health issues last year, but like he was theoretically that, that offense is wide receiver too. And because they weren't utilizing the tight end as heavily, which, you know, we haven't necessarily seen Russell Wilson do. Although I think Pat Fryermuth is probably the best tight end he's played with in several years. I just like, I think you're probably discounting also the skill set of George Pickens and what these two will do for each other opposite one another. Both of them were top five in terms of yards per reception average last year. Imagine if they're on the same team what they're yeah. going to open up for one another set up by the run game with Arthur Smith. I just, I, and I honestly have been a very bitter Pittsburgh Steelers fan for the last couple of seasons watching Kenny Pickett. So I, I really try not to be jaded, but from like a circumstantial perspective, I just don't see how these two can be bad for each other when neither of them were ne- necessarily like, the crux of volume like that wasn't the crux to their game was volume it's been efficiency and for pickens especially splash plays big plays breakaway runs for a touchdown like i don't and know a much maybe, better I'm, maybe I'm looney tunes no i hear you and I, and I definitely think wilson is a much better deep passer than the guys that have been here i know for a fact that Pickens is running a much more diverse route tree. It's not just a bunch of go routes like Canada had him do, just running wind sprints time and time again. And I do think, you know, another angle of this is, let's say they are going to run the ball like crazy. How do you put eight in the box with those two and prior move on the field, even if it's two, you know, two receivers on the field at once, I think that helps Najee. I, help it, I think it helps the entire offense. And I'm not sure everybody realizes this, but just looking at pass attempts per team last year, the Niners were last. They only threw the ball 491 times. Now, the Steelers only weren't far behind. They were 506, but the Falcons were at 530. I mean, they may throw the ball more than I they, – they probably will throw the ball more than Iuk's offense did last year. And there's also probably going to be more 
offensive plays in general. Now, that's not yeah, to say that they're not going to be running right. for a high percentage of them. But like, again, when you're per perpetuating this increase in offensive production, a part of that is like if you are going to possess the ball more um, and be more efficient with those touches, you're going to project for more play volume, which is, again, good for both of these guys. I just... I don't know. Maybe I'm Looney Tunes. Everybody feel free. Yell at me in the comments. Let me know. I'm a delusional <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers fan, but I still think let's go through the ADP real quick. Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver 15, some players going behind him. Devonta Smith. Like I'll take Ayuk there. Mm -hmm. Better uh, DJ play. Moore. Ayuk. Uh, Michael Pittman. That seems high for Pittman. Yeah, I think Ayuk. Ayuk. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, those are the the wide receivers being drafted directly behind Brandon Ayuk. I think the price is fair. I think it's fair right now. I, I want to see what it looks like if he does get traded to Pittsburgh, because uh, my my guess is that's going to go down a little bit, and that's where I would be interested. But uh, we've got other to topics to talk about today. This is not a Steelers show. This is not locked uh, on Steelers. We can talk about this whole time if you want. Uh, Thank goodness this is not <laughs> locked on Steelers, Matt. Uh, let's talk about J.J. McCarthy's injury and how that's going to impact your dynasty teams next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Listen, I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But unfortunately, with the playoffs now over in the NBA and in the NHL, we just have fewer and fewer games to watch, and the sports aren't sporting the way that I'd like them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime that I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Go check out those NFL futures. All the win totals are up. Every single game has the money line and the point spread available. You can get some really good value on some week two and week three lines. So go check those out. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen today. For your second listen, check out the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. Get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Matt, we got some unfortunate news on Tuesday regarding J.J. McCarthy the Vikings first round pick at quarterback. He has a torn meniscus. He's going to have surgery. It's not clear yet how much time he's going to miss. If it's a trim, it's like a four week injury four to six week injury. If it's a full repair, repair, it's likely to cost him his entire rookie season. How are we valuing not only McCarthy, but all of the Vikings pass catchers with this uh, latest news? So it's interesting to me because I I didn't want anything bad to happen to Purdy last year, but I would have loved, loved, loved to have seen Darnold start for the Niners for a month, for two months, six weeks, just to actually be with a legitimate program a little bit later in life and see if he could excel. And I think this is a really, really good opportunity for Darnold. And I've picked him up in all my leagues. I own him in a lot of leagues, super flex. I've wanted him all along because I think there is untapped talent there. However, we should probably bring this back to the Steelers, as usual. A couple of years ago, I'm sitting here in camp, and they draft Kenny Pickett in the first round, and they have Mitch Trubisky. And it was a real juggling act for the coaching staff to how do we give reps to the young guy who we have hope for and the guy we know is going to start the season. So you'd love to load up the rookie with as many reps as possible, but now you can't. And as soon as game prep for week one starts – you definitely can't. And then at what point does the head coach go to the, you know, the team and say, all right, we're going to start working McCarthy in with the ones. I mean, you'd have to be two and eight, something like that. Like it's mm -hmm. going to be really difficult. People don't realize there's not as much practice time as you think. There's not as much practice time in training camp. There's not as much practice time on Wednesdays and Thursdays as you prepare for a Sunday game. So it has to go to Darwin. So McCarthy is going to be on the outside looking in for quite a while. And I think of all the first round quarterbacks, he's the one that needed the most time this time of year. You know, the, 
everyone talked about he should sit. Well, yeah, he should sit because he's practicing like crazy now, and now he's not getting any of that. Kate, what do you think? It's it's very challenging for me to kind of evaluate the situation, but I keep going back like to last year, right? The Vikings were a disaster last year. Let's not forget that like we've already done the song and dance. I don't like Sam Darnold. And I don't think Sam Darnold is a good quarterback. There's no doubt he has some arm talent. But going back to last year, Justin Jefferson averaged 119 receiving yards and a half a touchdown per game over his final four games. And for context, per PFF, the Vikings quarterbacks had the second lowest accurate throw rate over those four games in wow. the National Football League as a whole. So, like, it might not matter for a a Justin Jefferson, who I think has all this, all the skill in the world. Like I'm, I'm totally fine with whatever circumstance befalls him. It's probably the other skill position players, like a Jordan Addison that like, I don't necessarily know he's, you know, they're Jordan Addison. He's a little bit smaller, like doesn't necessarily have all of the length of a Justin Jefferson, nor is he as talented a, a wide receiver, even though he is very talented. Like, I, you know, Justin Jefferson, I'm cool with. It probably does give a little ding to Jordan Addison, though, in, in his rookie season on top of the concerns, uh, legal concerns we're already having. So, like, it's an interest. It, it the, the range of outcomes here is so wide. So this sucks for J.J. McCarthy. Let's just be yeah. clear. I, I, yes. My guess my guess, and we're again, we're recording this on Tuesday afternoon. My guess is that the Vikings are going to do the, the long term surgery to make sure that he's 100 percent healthy for 2025 mm -hmm. and beyond. I think that's probably the right decision. Allow him to sit back and watch for a year, learn the playbook, and not force and not rush him back onto the field. I think that's probably the best long term outcome for McCarthy and the Vikings. Having said all that. I think it's better for everybody else in this offense that Sam Darnold's going to start. And you mentioned the Justin Jefferson stats, Kate. Look at somebody like TJ Hawkinson, who was on pace to be tight end one before he got hurt. He averaged 73 yards per game last year without Kirk Cousins. And that is Nick Mullins, Jaron Hall, and Josh Dobbs throwing him the football. Like Kevin O'Connell is a wizard. Like he's going to figure out ways to keep these guys productive. And I just think Sam Darnold is better and more talented than all three of those quarterbacks. So I kind of think this is a blessing in disguise. If you have Justin Jefferson in your dynasty leagues, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, and anybody else. It okay, certainly do you isn't think that this is a time like, so we, we know that you guys feel comfortable with the, the fantasy prospects of the receivers. Is there any world where in a two quarterback super flex scoring format that you're actually considering or would you ever advise a fantasy manager to like eh, you know look look at that talented receiving core that sam darnold's gonna play with look at that look at that uh genius offensive coach that he's playing with would you ever give the the recommendation to go trade for sam darnold right at this point because yes. it does seem like it's oh, a yeah. season ending injury yes. real okay um well what's the okay, ceiling I well, okay, I'm, I'm going to read you some names. So I'm looking at ESPN's redraft rankings, and I'm going to just tell you some of the quarterbacks that I would draft Sam Darnold ahead of, assuming that Darnold is a in a dynasty league or in no, a redraft. redraft. Just redraft. Okay. Um, Geno Smith. I think I'd rather have Sam Darnold than Geno. Matt, what do you think? It's a neighborhood. I mean, that, that's a yeah. Daniel Jones. I think Jones runs so much, though. He just can't he stay healthy, though. And he's not very good. Got it. Uh, Bryce Young. I'd rather have Darnold oh. than Bryce Young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now you're already talking about a top 20 quarterback into their rankings. So, mm -hmm. yeah, in a, in a two-quarterback league, absolutely. And I think because Kevin O'Connell is so good, I think we could talk about him maybe as a top 18 or so option. And Peacock and I were talking about this. What stinks for the Vikings, too, is – not only is the guy invested in not going to be able to, it stinks for him 100%. But Darnold's only on a one year deal. So even if he plays great, the the, the Giants are going to give him a contract or so, the Steelers, Steelers somebody, are going to give him a contract. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's oh, going to want him. And no. <laughs> that, would, that would make your day, Kate. Okay. Yeah. But he's going to walk for nothing if he's good. You know, like you don't even get a pick out of him. 
Sam Darnold, future Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. Kate, what do you think? I'm going to chop no, my no, eyeballs no. out. <laughs> uh, all right, let's I, talk I, about... I think value just plummeted. Right? There, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you rejoined them. They were in San Fran together last year. So there you go. Maybe it won't be too bad. Uh, let's talk about how to evaluate rookies in the preseason, how to overreact, underreact, or should you even react at all? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What are your self-care non-negotiables? Maybe you never skip the gym. Maybe you never skip leg day. Maybe you never skip your morning walk. That's what I do. I love going on morning walks, listening to podcasts, clears my brain before we start the day. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's sometimes hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever before. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for any reason at no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Every day, as Kate and I will be back on Thursday and Friday to get you ready for the preseason. Uh, week two, we've got some really good games coming up. We should see more starters playing. We sh- should see more roles for some of these rookies. And Matt, this leads us to this question from Jake. He wants to know, how do you guys evaluate rookies in the preseason? Is it based on production? Is it based on their role? Do you overreact? Do you underreact? What's the appropriate response here? Well, you start looking over or underreact. I mean, people get so excited for football, and we don't know do these young men know the right routes to run. You know, all the mental stuff. You know, so but a, a quick footnote that isn't all that hard to find. That used to be. There's so many good fantasy sites and so much good fantasy information out there now. You two do both. You know, quite a bit of it as well. But I, I think one key indicator is who's in the game with the starting quarterback. You know, like when Pat Holmes comes out, did Xavier Worthy play much after that? Or did he come in with Mahomes at all? You know what I mean? Like how many snaps did Coleman play with Allen? How many snaps did Worthy play with Mahomes? And if they're they're on the field together, they're going to be on the field together. The thing that sticks out to me is definitely the, the usage and the situational usage because – I'm thinking back, like I I was trying to come up with in my memory, you know, the, the kind of picture of a preseason bust uh, that came out as a rookie that just fell flat on their face. And I thought of Nick Chubb who, you know, has been a perennial, uh, you know, just absolute stud at the running back position. Unfortunately might not get to see that come to fruition this year, but uh, as a rookie, he had 45 rushing attempts, 140 yards, uh, that averaged out to just 3.1 yards per carry. He looked like garbage. And then all of a sudden, like mid-season, something clicked with Nick Chubb. And I do think that there's like, there is something to that mental aspect. So I, I think you need to watch the rookies when they're on the field, who they're playing behind, because that gives you the idea of the pecking order. But I do also just think it, it gives you time to evaluate like, where they're at and their progression. Some players like a Quentin Johnston, for example, like, you know, we knew he was a raw prospect coming out. So if he doesn't light up the, pro- the, the preseason, then we, we have that additional context, but like, I don't know, there's a million ways you can look at it, but I think the best way to approach it is not to overreact or underreact. And you have to view every player's, situation individually which is a lot of work i I will say really quickly i i play in some very competitive dynasty leagues and there's several owners or managers in that league that just don't watch the preseason because they feel like it clouds their judgment a little bit on some of these players they'll just go with what their maybe pre-draft uh beliefs were on a player or whenever they traded for a player and 
that tends to help them not make rash decisions and, and bad trades in August. Most of what happens in the preseason doesn't end up mattering when we get to the regular season. So I'm not saying to just completely avoid the preseason altogether, but I'm not changing my opinion on a player more than like 5% based on what happens in some meaningless games in August. Can you guys guess right. who the top rated uh, rookie in a preseason uh, dating back to uh, what is this? The 2017 season, the top rated rookie wide receiver in terms of PFF receiving grade dating back to 2017. Anybody have any idea? Not a clue, but I bet it's not tearing up the league as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> the the best rookie grade came in at a 92.9, and that was Nikhil Harry. As a ah, nice. And that is the best grade from First a rookie rounder, preseason yeah. that we have had dating back to 2017. So, like, yeah, he, you know, he had a, a pretty solid, uh, you know, good enough showing uh, in that didn't really. Well, I think what's. Since this is a Steeler <laughs> podcast, right? Let's let's finish this out with a Steeler thought, right? We saw Kenny Pickett last year light up the preseason. Right. You get to week one and it's just pff, none of it matters. They get blown out by San Fran. I'm sure you guys remember that one really well. I recall. Uh, and yeah. like all that positive, all those positive vibes were just gone within one week, and nobody cares about the preseason anymore. I I just treat preseason with the very smallest grain of salt. Uh, and I'm more just looking for how players are used, when they're playing, and not actually what kind of numbers they're posting at all. All right. Uh, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty Football your first listen of the day. For your second listen, go check out the Locked On Fantasy Football podcast. Get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season. You can find the link to the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast in the description in this podcast. So you don't even need to go search for it. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Go download the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on, on all platforms. Check out the show on YouTube as well. Go follow Matt on Twitter at Williamson NFL. Check out his new YouTube channel as well. You can follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. Make sure that you're reading her at Yahoo Fantasy. And I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. And we will see you right back here tomorrow.